Hello everybody, welcome back to SnowRunner, my hard mode playthrough. I'm in the Kodiak at the moment. I'm just moving the Kodiak to a location a little bit closer to where I'm going to be coming out of the mountain in the Tatra Force. And I don't want to go through the big puddle, so I'm just kind of cross country in a little bit in the Kodiak, which is done really well actually. Because I didn't engage all wheel drive or diff lock for that. I basically just went for a little drive to see how it did. It did really well. So, yeah, we, in the previous episode, just watch me tip it over right there now. But no. Just leaving it where I can do some drive by refueling, basically. In the previous episode, I delivered 12 units of cargo up to the gold mine. And it went really well. What I'm going to do in this one is come down and deliver and collect and deliver six barrels of fuel from the railway station, as I said I would do. But I wanted fuel and I found some other routes. So when I left the Kodiak here in the last episode, I didn't think about or I didn't realise that I was going to find routes that pushed me a little bit more westward. So, yeah, just moved the Kodiak basically from there to here, nearly 300 metres. But it's now in a better position to refuel the force when because the force is going to come down through this gap, basically. So, jumping into the force, and we'll crack on with the main part of the episode. That was just a little bit of preamble that I did to be ready. The force has got mud tyres on. I fitted that in the last episode if anybody missed it. Um... Turn me around. So I've got these uh, OHS2 mud tyres fitted. And so far so good. Not got any reason to complain about them. Coming into evening unfortunately. Once I'm turned around we'll get some... Get some lights on. Maybe pop it into a bit of cab view and drive down to where the Kodiak is, which is going to be the same route that we were using in the last episode to get cargo up and down. And we're going to get six barrels of, or six pallets of fuel barrels from the railway station and bring them back up to the same place. And I'm happy with the route I'm using, so let's just keep doing the same thing. Recording this one on Friday. This is the this is the Saturday episode. So first Saturday for a couple of weeks that we haven't had a special. Uh, recording this one on Friday afternoon, but before the Friday episode has gone live. So uh, sitting at about five hundred and eighty-two subscribers. Which kind of blows my mind, really. And thank you very much to every single one of you. I... Oh, have I gone past? Oh. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. It's here. Let me just put a waypoint. I saw that sign. And I didn't recognise it. I was looking for the sign that's at the point we're going to turn left. Yeah, so so from zero subscribers. When did, when did my series start? So my very first episode was January, and we're now in September. Uh, so from January to now, so just over eight months, depending on the exact days. And I'm not going to look up the exact days, but I know it was January. We went from zero to 500 subscribers in in nearly nine months. And uh, 500 subscribers was two weeks ago, yesterday. So 15 days. And we're almost at 600 already. 
So the first 500 took nine months. And so far, the next 100 could be on track to do that in three weeks. Which is a bit mad and really, really, really nice for me. Obviously. Very appreciative of every one of you. And as I said, I think a couple of episodes ago, from an analytics perspective, you can really see the uptick of interest and engagement and subscribers and views and watch hours and all, all of the analytics stuff really goes up when there's a special expedition. So the Amur, well, the, the unlock of this Tatra Force in the Don region was two episodes of special. And then the Amur stuff to unlock the Zix and then the Azov suspension. The specials cause a big uptick. And this content is getting decent views because people are watching our channel. I'm really, really you know, mind blown by it. But there's a surge, there's a definite surge that you can see in the analytics around the dates that the specials go live. Which is obviously nice to see. Well, I'll do the specials to get myself more powerful trucks. But, um because I want to collect all the shiny toys, right? <laughs> we all do. And this is my first playthrough that's got anywhere near this far when I started this game. So for anybody who may be new to the channel that hasn't watched all 160-something back episodes, which I'll get, um, there's a lot to catch up on if you were dedicated enough to do that. Then thank you, but it's a, it's a lot to, to do. I started this series because the normal mode I got kind of halfway through some of Michigan being done I hadn't really done more than look at Alaska I hadn't really done more than go and get a Tega in Tamir but I hadn't you know, I'd hardly done anything there were Drummond Island I'd, I'd not done a single task in, in my campaign save and I was a little bit jaded at how easy the game was with all of the DLCs because I bought the year one and two season passes when I bought the game in a, in a um, Christmas winter sale that was where I first got a hold of the game which I don't just swap I haven't used my roof rack yet. I'll just swap and fuel it properly. Um, so I came late to the game anyway. But I bought all of the shiny toys, as you do. And then I was a bit surprised at how easy the game was when you've got things like Bandit. Easy access to buy yourself anything you want, basically. And yes, at a low level, you're locked by tyres and stuff. But even so, when you've got a bandit, Michigan is easy. Without any upgrades on it, it's just easy. So, I decided to start hard mode. And I had already been thinking, wouldn't it be cool to learn how to make videos? And I'd already considered other games that I might want to do that with. And I've been kicking around the idea of doing a YouTube channel and learning to make videos for a while before this and then when I decided to start again in hard mode and play this game in hard mode I thought well combine the two record my first um, session of hard mode I had no idea how to edit that uh, I, I think I used iMovie on my Mac I have a Mac for work reasons I think I used iMovie and then slowly and gradually built up a little bit of popularity with it. It's, you know, if, and if people are watching it, I'll keep making it. Right? That's the. Uh, I would have if people weren't watching it. If it had been un unsuccessful or um, not gained any traction with other people interested in watching my content, I would have probably recorded ten or so episodes, 
called it good, said, yeah, I've learned what I need to from video editing. I know how to make a video now, I know how to record. And left it there and maybe carried on playing the save myself, but not necessarily worry too much about hey, persevering with a channel when there's only 10 people watching and four of them are family. I probably wouldn't have bothered. But as the analytics just kept getting better, my enthusiasm to keep going kept getting better. And I'm enjoying the game still. I'm really enjoying the, the process of content creation. I think I've come a long way in terms of editing. Um, I'm certainly no expert. I'm getting, I'm getting better. It takes me a long time. I, when I started, I was doing a video every day. So I was, and basically that was a case of record for about an hour, listen through and just do enough editing to mute out any coughs and background noises and dog barking or anything like that. Just kind of mute out as much as I could. And then um, I outgrew iMovie moved on to DaVinci Resolve which gives me a lot more capability um, I learned a lot more about how OBS works big difference was working out how to split the, the audio so the game audio is a different track to the mic so therefore it gives me the choice which I now use quite a lot which I'm probably doing right now because this is pretty slow as I'm driving but um, it gives me the choice of time lapse in the game footage and then cutting and slicing the microphone narrative over the top of it. Whereas early doors, if I did a time lapse, I was just putting some copyright free, free music over the top of it. Whereas now, if I do a time lapse, I try to fill it with narrative as well. So it's not just a case of uh, the talking stops and there's a bit of canned music to listen to and then the talking starts again at the end of the time lapse it seems to be popular it takes me a lot more effort and it's that effort that caused me to drop from recording every day to four videos a week and I'm getting faster at that I've got some you know, my, my techniques for doing that editing is getting quicker but it still takes me Whereas it used to be an hour of editing to edit out the sort of background noise of a one hour video. It now takes me about three or four hours to edit a one hour video. Which is a fair bit of work, but it's, it's not really work as it's a hobby. I'm enjoying it. I'll try and get this on a better line without having to mess around with it quite so much as I did last time. So I'm coming back. here see if I can get this on a line not gone too far nope that'll do start it turning the winch and then pull it forward a bit pull it onto its side Yeah, that's not what I intended, but that'll do. I can always manoeuvre it with a crane if I need to. The biggest thing, and I, and I haven't worked out how to do this, I've, I've tried really hard in the editing software to make this less dark, but I can't do it in a way, I haven't been able to work out how to do it in a way that doesn't make like the headlights glare. You can light an, enti uh, an entirely dark scene, but it's quite hard to do it. Sort of to choose which bits of it end up light and dark.
keep trying to work out how to do this. This crane just doesn't want to do it. It's a great crane, but it's not good at close. Put it on top and hope it'll all pack. Should do. See if that stays on. Pack it, unpack it, restore the crane, and let's get the trailer on. Well, it just takes time, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not. I don't dislike doing it, it just takes time. Touch. and pack. Six slots packed. So this has to go back up exactly to the gold mine where we started the episode. And again, I'm going to use exactly the route we used before. So it should be easy stuff. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong, right? So in terms of channel, yes, I am continuing with this and I am committed to if the rumours of a year three pass are proved to be accurate and we do end up seeing a year three, which one assumes that is another four phases taking us to phase eight is about to be released and then during the next year we would see nine ten eleven and twelve um and it, they seem like fairly solid rumors considering that it's the dev lead basically saying yeah future phases won't be based on real world locations just because of the geopolitical situation in the world they're going to be fictitious areas which won't make any difference to us as drivers, I don't think. Um, my intention is to keep going as long as there's main content for this game. If I'd have got to, like if the devs said, right, you know, phase eight is it, that's it, finished. We're not going to do any more. Uh, what was it now? Then I could see me getting to the end of those eight phases. And that's the end of SnowRunner for me on this channel. Because I don't think I would do mod maps. I've not used any mods at all. Mod maps is a different thing, right? Because I I don't use mods because I do believe there's it's a slippery slope for me or in terms of there are mods to make life easier and this is a hard mode challenge. There are definitely a lot of overpowered mods out there. I personally am not happy to use mods that make hard mode easier. But mod maps, that's a different thing. If you've got vanilla trucks and all you're doing is getting mod maps, that might be interesting if they're well designed maps. I'm not sure. But yeah, I would have probably ended up um, that Snow Runner is finished. But because the devs have said that there's going to be a year three, or they've strongly hinted that there's going to be a year three, I will be playing it. And my intention is just to keep going as long as there's vanilla content to do. What I'm pretty sure I wouldn't do is start all over again with a new, with a new game plus mode save. Because the only thing I would possibly do there is recreate hard mode. Why would I play easy mode, right? What's the point of me playing easy mode after I achieve hard mode? Personally, it doesn't work for me. Um, but, New Game Plus has the option of recreating hard mode and the only concession I would make myself for sure is daylight because things like this what you're seeing right now 
is difficult to watch on YouTube sometimes, depending on your screen and so on. Um, I get that. I know that. I get enough comments about it to make me real aware that it affects people. I also know that you guys know that it is part of hard mode. I'm not going to sit and wait out night time every time I play. I've done that once for a particularly special cargo, but I'm not going to sit and do that every time it gets dark in the game and wait until it's daylight because that's too much real time for me. A like harder mode, maybe maybe like no truck store. You got to use what you find on the map. That's an interesting option. That would make it harder than hard mode. Uh, not allowed to sell trucks. That would make it hard. But I don't see the point, right? If, if I get to the point that I've got 100% completion in hard mode, as far as I'm concerned, from a from a content perspective, it's done. I'm not just gonna. So so I would then be looking for other games to carry on the YouTube experience. And it might be that I introduce. I've talked about other games before. Introducing another game. Anyway. Um, just to start diversifying a little bit. And that might need to be done anyway, just in terms of balance. Because if I caught up with the content and I was therefore waiting for DLCs in order to have something to do, then I would want something else on the channel anyway. But it might be better to try and ration the content there is so that I'm not waiting for a DLC. Not sure how the weight of fuel compares to the concrete slabs and metal rolls that we had on the last trip. But that stayed in low high for the whole climb then, no problem. my eye on a couple of games that are due to come out relatively soon that I'm thinking of using or playing. I've got some games in my f sort of catalogue already that I enjoy, I know I enjoy. So I lost power then. Uh, Farming Sim being the most obvious one in terms of something that matches or is close enough to the content that probably some people will be interested in both of those. Uh, Space Engineers is an obvious one. I've, I've got a real urge to play Space Engineers again. But it's a bit less of a correlation in terms of would the same people be interested in it? To a certain extent, yes, because most of us that are watching this are gamers. And gamers like games. Um, I like SnowRunner, I like Space Engineers, I like Satisfactory, I like farming sim. Other people will have the similar sort of practic set of tastes of things they like. Um, certain types of games I don't watch other people play, or don't, and I don't anymore play myself. I don't play first person shooters anymore. I used to play them a lot, but not not anymore. Don't really don't really appeal to me anymore. I do like the either driving or construction or sort of strategic thinking games rather than 
um, Twitch reaction games. Quick screenshot. And then we've got Cargo one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is all of the metal rolls, all of the slabs, all of the fuel. We now need 10 bricks. And there are bricks. I'll activate this just so that I can see them. What I'm thinking is this is an opportunity to try out that other route that I thought I saw. So basically, it's got to be easier going down it than up it. And I've got, I was full of fuel when I started coming up this way. So down here, down this bank, and if I'm going down it, I can try that with these tyres and see whether it's icy rock. I know when I was in our scout, that I couldn't climb this without chains. My yard couldn't get up there with mud tires on. Going down, gravity helps. I can come and get two lots of bricks from here. Then I can turn around, pick up a trailer, and then come down through here and get Can I get past that conveyor here? I'm not sure actually. I mean, there's tracks there, but I don't know. A little bit, little, little bit of an adventure. So let's go and get those bricks, and then come down here. I know I can get these bricks from that route. What I don't know is whether I can get past the conveyor with these bricks. But we're going to pick up some bricks. And we're going to take the trailer with us because we're going to try and get six lots. Stop tracking that so that I don't have the annoying markers. And let's just go. So this is going to be a bit... I'm glad it's daylight, but this is a bit of an adventure now. We're going to see what we can find down through this. And I've not driven this route in my campaign mode either because I didn't do it. I came up here with a coal of delivering a trailer just to see how it was. And then... I turned around and went back, so I've never driven like, onwards in this direction. That's my other ore trader, I'm pretty sure. Interesting. Bumpy old mess. Is that the descent? No. Further on. But mud tyres, see how we do. I'm leaving it in all-wheel drive, I think. Okay, so I'll stay high for now. I've got the option of coming down here. I'm not going to do that. And that looks pretty icy. So I'm not confident about climbing up that bit on my left right now with muds on. Might not be icy. Might just look it, but it looks pretty steep and it looks pretty icy to me. This also looks like it should be icy. But so far, so good. It looks like it should be bricks that I can deconstruct. It is. So I hadn't got close enough to do this yet, but this is bricks that I can deconstruct. So that's cool. So bricks onto the loading platform. And then crane mode. Don't know if I can reach a trailer with this crane. I doubt it. Maybe. No, that's not going to pack, is it? It'd be weird if it did. It did. Interesting. Can I get the other one? That's packed. Bit cheesy. I'm good with it though. 
Uh, so the crane. Engine off. So that's one of the five that I've got to locate. Yeah, stick to plan. So we'll try and back it up a little bit. Head down here. Get to the bottom, drop the trailer off. Go up and get that brick framing. And then reattach the trailer, come down, get another one, and then worry about how to get back up. I'm going to try and back it up without dropping it. Dolly trailer reversing. Not my favourite thing in the world to do. And then this... I'm assessing this as I go as to whether or not this is something I could climb up with mud tyres. In case I ever need to. I don't know if I will need to, but let's get it into low. Possibly. I'm in low. <laughs> Maybe I want to be in lower low. It's pretty steep. Quite a few trees. But if I stop, I do stop. So maybe it's not as icy as it looks. Yeah. I don't know about climbing up that with six slots of cargo on. It looks like I might be asking for trouble, but... drop this trailer I think I'll make my life easier if I drop it to the left and then go on my own with a truck get two pallets of bricks and then come back down get the trailer and then have the trailer pointed in the right direction already that'll do drop the trailer there and then I'm going to turn right and head up and get some bricks Got a full roof rack, so I'm not going to worry about fuel for a minute. I know I'm churning through it, but... Get out of these ruts and onto that fresh ground, it might be better. Take a better line then, rather than going straight through the middle of that puddle. Never quite sure with a puddle like that how deep the centre is and therefore how steep the camber would be. If you take the edge, is our target anyway. Sorry mate, I know you've worked hard to half build a house but I'm going to nick it now. Crane, pack the cargo and back down, pick up our trailer and come down to this third 
location. What I'm slightly worried about is whether I can get back up from that side. Whether, whether it's possible to get past this conveyor. And it might not be. In which case I would be turning around and coming back. Maybe trying to go back up the slope I just drove down. Almost wonder where it would be worth just not bothering with a trailer because these bricks were relatively close. Just going and getting two lots of bricks at a time, doing six trips. Or five trips, rather. But it's been an adventure. Off we go. Off we go at two miles an hour. So that's the cabin zone. At the moment the cabins are on the twin steer. So I either need to put them on something else or drive the twin steer in here. Might be a good challenge for me. I need a crane there anyway. I'm not messing with the forklifts. And then the camera round coming into dark again unfortunately. Just trying to make the most of the daylight to see what visibility I've got. Sorry driver, wet feet again. So what's this one then? Out of interest. Blood aftermath. Forgotten, it's been that long. We lost the service spare parts. So there's one there. Can't see the other one at the minute, but same sort of area we've just come from. Worry about that separately. Good truck for it though. down land a bit thought that would go a bit better than it did pull it in a straight line and these trailers aren't too bad So we are approaching the bridge that I fell off in, uh, was it the, was it the Yar? I think it was the Yar. But here's the bricks that we're after. Can I get underneath that? I don't think I can. There's no, there's no way underneath that pipe, is there? Well darn. So I need to get my trailer so that I can put two lots of bricks on the back of it. Without the trailer being in the red box. It won't like that. Bricks. It's a loading platform.
So the question is, do I turn it around and drive all the way back the way I've just come? Or do something different? If I turn it around, I'm not even sure at the moment whether I would be able to get back up that hill without chains. Stole the crane. I might as well, as my fuel in my roof is empty. Engine off. My choice is to get back up that hill from here. Because there's no way I'm going to get past this. This one's down, so I could, if I went over the bridge, I could get through there, I think. That's one of the ones that I haven't fixed yet. And I'm not going to fix them till the end. Question is, does that help me? Don't know whether that's a crossing point. Or whether I should just accept the fact that I should turn around and go back up to here. I think I'm going to do that and then we'll see if these tyres can get me back up that descent. A bit risky. Not least of which because I've got to turn this trailer around. But let's attach it so that I can pack the two that I've just put on it before I try to turn it. Pitch black. Sorry. Can't be as aggressive turning it as I was in the railway station with it empty precisely because it's not empty so we try and roll it around rather than bullying it around so that's attached Will that give it any stability if I just continue trying to drive it forwards? So although it's pitch black, so you couldn't really see what was happening there, I did manage to turn it safely. Fuel could be a challenge, or rather getting back to the Kodiak fuel could be a challenge at least. Some help from a better winch point. Pretty heavy with six lots of bricks on. going to be horrible in the cab I'm afraid as in it's not good for me to see what's going on either pretty bumpy I have to rely on the fact that I would hear it if I dropped the bricks right so right turn here and then we're at the bottom of the incline the icy incline <laughs> that felt like a little bit of a lean Let's make sure I know the incline. So it's basically up that. At, he, at this point, I've got a choice. Either continue straight up or come along this ledge. Maybe even along that ledge. Could I get around that then? Looks like that's a... Does more of the ascent. Get You get more altitude... A, a more gentle slope and then a little bit steep at the end we'll see how it looks when we're there so we're going to do this in low I might as well stick in high while I've got traction.
and this is going to be about so this can end up really messy as the adventure because if this is too icy for me to make progress I with mud tires on I will not be reversing it back down it's going to be more a case of tipping it back down I know that's not where the waypoint is but That is the way I came down, I think, isn't it? Or is it? Oh, handbrake. Didn't drop anything then, did I? No. <laughs> handbrake, just check that this isn't fuel. No. So I got up this far because I had momentum and then I stopped and slid backwards. Maybe I want to try and roll back enough to get momentum again without dropping my trailer. A bit confused because I got up this without too much difficulty just now. luck and line with the rocks I suppose I'm going to try this slightly what looks like a shallow ascent and then worry about the end at the end Right, so using Misha's suggestion, I've now got a winch ahead of me, and without losing that winch, I can get another one on there. Which will pull me a little bit further. And you can use the first winch to stop you falling backwards. Hopefully let you get a second winch on. Into the snow, because that's going to be better grip. Unless my trailer's stuck on a tree. Again, that's another ascent, isn't it? No, I'm going to keep going, because I don't want to back up enough to try and turn in there and then slide all the way back down the bottom again. And we haven't dropped any cargo, which is somewhat miraculous. Don't like that camber too much, but it's not as bad as it could be. There's a tree above me as well. Let's get that on for safety. And then I've got to be looking to get up to the left here. Uh oh. Don't much like the look of that. go these tires for the win uh, I think that climb bit would have been easier with chains on but these tires did the job and are certainly easier in mud I'm not regretting the purchase 
at all. What I haven't done is a kind of like for like comparison of trying the same thing with muds on. But technically, I think this stuff, if it doesn't count as ice, then it counts as dirt. So therefore, these tyres would be better than muds. That's the way I'm kind of understanding it from the tyre stats. Because if that did count as ice, I don't think I'd have got through it, right? I'm not wrong there, am I? Uh, let's go around this way. I was going to try and squeeze through that gap, but that's... Uh, Unnecessary risk. That is now fuel. Oh, come on. Let me just get that a little bit further to deliver it. Oh. Oh, look at how close I am to delivering that. Anything I can... No, don't winch backwards. Be fool. Yeah, that's out of fuel. And there's nothing in front of me to winch from while it's got... Yeah, there we go. Out of fuel. So near, so very far. But do you know what? That sets us up to do something fun in the next episode. So here's what I'm going to do is a teaser what's going to come in the next episode uh, there is a contract to deliver mountain top delivery get rid of all these waypoints the mountain top delivery is to deliver a super large trailer which is located there in the railway station I think it's one of the cable ones i don't think it's as anywhere near as big as the tanks we did in the other map but deliver that trailer up to the gold mine so what i'm going to do at the start of the next episode is bring the zix 605 through and i'm going to use the zix to move that trailer up to the gold mine and in the process it can give me a bit of fuel and i think that'll be a bit of fun Zix 605 is going to arrive on this map. And at the start of the next episode, we'll use it to get this a little bit of refuel and then that big delivery done. And then this can carry on getting the rest of the bricks. And then we'll just have cabins to do and we will and we'll be done with the first phase of reinvigorating the old mine, which is pretty good. Um, so I am going to wrap this episode here and do all of that in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. I did. It was a bit a bit adventurous. Off onto bits of track that I'd never been on before. This truck performed brilliantly, as usual. Just ran out of fuel. What? Five meters shy of where it needed to be to do the delivery. Typical. So, yeah, I'm going to wrap this one here. I hope you're looking forward to the next one. In the meantime, thanks and goodbye. <laughs>